Hello everyone, welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to be showing you how you can create uh, a call to action button like this. Uh, they're usually called CTAs in, in, in terms of like how uh, design people uh, and front end people refer to these kind of buttons. It basically calls for an action and as you can see when you hover on it, there's like uh, some sort of a cool animation here. And when you press on it, you kind of go through this phase of waiting. And at some point, the action that was supposed to be done by this button is now done. In this case, something got activated. So please, uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do so that you can find our new tutorials easier. But also, if you like this tutorial, I would like to ask you to kind of like this. Um, video as well so that others like you can find it easily. So let's get started. I'm going to go to kothus.com slash codenest. This is basically the prototyping editor that we usually use for these tutorials. But if you want to do it on other editors or you want to write your own codes, it's simply the same. It's, it's exactly the same. It's just that we kind of automated a bunch of stuff. So let's get started. What we need to do is to create a div, I will give it a class called button uh, or let's say BTN. So this will be our actual button. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm in the HTML tab. I'm going to go to CSS and I will style the BTN. So BTN, let's give it a width of 250 pixel and height of 70 pixel. Uh, so far, nothing is visible. If you remember here, the color of this, if I refresh it again, it's like a kind of bluish. Uh, I already have the hex code for this color, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it here. And uh, then what we need to do is, let me just make sure that I'm writing this correctly so that we actually see the button. And then we have a border radius uh, of let's say 50 pixel. You can see that it makes it rounded on the corners. Uh, I want to make sure that this button for this purpose, you don't need to, depends on when you want to, where you want to put it in your page. But for this purpose, I'm going to center it in the, in, in, in the current viewport here. So we can set the position to be absolute. And then I give it a left of 50% and top of 50% as well. And then I'm going to use transform translate minus 50% and minus 50%. This kind of centers it in the page. Uh, now, the next thing I want to do is that if you look at here, what we have is really two things here. One is this circle, which kind of is like a holder for this icon here. And then we have a text over here. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is going to the HTML tab again. Within here, I'm going to create a class icon, just like that. And this will serve as that round white circle. And then I can have another div. I'm going to give it a class text to contain our text, right? So let's say the text will be like activate, like the one that we have. Uh, now we need to style this. For the icon, what I'm going to do is uh, I can give it like a position absolute because I want to really put it here. So I'm going to set the position to be absolute. I will give it a width of 50 pixel and height of 50 pixel. It depends on what width and height you want to give your um, icon. And then I will make sure that the background is uh, background is white as what we want it. Then I will make sure that the border radius of this is 50 pixel. It can be 50% as well. Uh, it kind of makes it round and nice. And then I want to make sure that it's actually where I want to be. Uh, so where I will set left to be 20 pixel. Uh, and then I just want to make sure that it is vertically centered. So since the position is absolute, I will give it top 50%. And then I will do transform. I use transform to translate it in y axis though minus 50% because on x axis I only want uh, it from uh, to be 20 pixel from the left. And you can see it kind of 
resides over here. The same goes with the with the text. So if you want to uh, sort of align the text here, we actually had a div with the class text. And I'm going to say again, position absolute kind of is the same principle as the icon. Uh, I want to make sure that the top is 50%. And then I use transform translate y to be minus 50%. So it kind of centers it vertically. And then, you know, I would put the left to be maybe something like 130 pixel. So you can see it puts it over here. But there are a couple of things we want to do here. First, I want to make sure that the color of it is white. So I'm just going to make sure that this is white. And then I will make it bigger. Let's do it maybe 20 pixel. And also, you know, the, the, the one that we actually have here has a different uh, font type. And for these, I usually use Google Fonts. So I'm just going to go to Google Fonts and then come here. And what I'm going to do is let's let's just choose Roboto. So I'm going to use that. And there are different things you can do. You can obviously download the family if you want. But also, let's say I want to have uh, this time, this one, which is medium 500. And then this kind of uh, sidebar comes in. I will choose embed. And I already have what I need here. So I can just choose this. Uh, if you're not using code who's code net, you just paste this in your head tag. But I'm going to use actually CSS and I will import it instead. So I'm going to use import, go back here, go to the CSS, and then on top of my, my CSS pane, I'm going to add this here. Now I can just go ahead in the Google font. It says set your font family to be Roboto sans serif. So I'm going to go back and make sure that my font family is set to that. And now you can see that it kind of has a better. Uh, font over here and if you notice it's a little bit far off from this I can fix it by maybe put it 80 uh, or maybe let's put it 100 so now it kind of looks like uh, what I want it to be so now we have uh, set up these uh, things the next thing I want to add is uh, is the icons uh, that we can see over here so we have this arrow up and then when you hover on the button, you can see that it actually changes to this uh, this mark. Uh, I usually use uh, Ionicons for that matter. So I go to Ionicons.com. And then here you can see there are a bunch of uh, icons here. So for example, the icon that I used uh, initially was uh, for the arrow. I would use this one. And it actually says how to use it. Uh, it has a usage part. I just clicked on the usage. It says basically you need to um, paste this for your icon. And then somewhere here it actually has a script that you can load in your project. Um, so I'm going to copy this. Going back to our prototype. Go to the JavaScript since it's a JavaScript. I will open the settings here and I will paste it over here as a library. And let's save it. Now it's easy as uh, going back to wherever we were. I'm going to choose this arrow and then I will just copy this or click on it. It actually copies it for us. Now what I can do is simply go here and paste it here. Now you can see that it's pretty small here, but then now we can actually give it some styles. And in order to do that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a class actually. So let's give it a class arrow since we're going to have a bunch of items here. And then going to the CSS, I need to style that. So I will put arrow here. And it just needs to be in the center. And the way to do that, uh, I would just give it like a, uh, let's change the font size to be bigger, maybe 30 pixel. I will change the color to be the same color as the button here uh, at this moment. So let's give it the color that we gave here. I'm just going to copy it here. Uh, and then I want to center it. And the way to center it is pretty easy. You just need to set the position to be absolute. And then left to be 50%, top to be 50%, and then again transform, translate minus 50% and minus 50%. Right? So it kind of centers it over here. 
So far, um, what we've done is to pretty much make this shape initially there is no interaction so far there's nothing and that is for the purpose that uh, for a purpose because i want to show you the kind of uh, flow that i've i did when i when i when i did this uh, sort of prototype so first things first uh, this is the button so we go to here and then set the cursor to be pointer so that when you when we go over it it actually shows uh, some sort of a pointer cursor as you can see and the next thing is that now we want to be able to, when we hover on this button, we want this to change to uh, the other check uh, to the other icon that we have over here, right? This check mark. So in order to do that, we actually need to have two icons, right? And going to back to Ionicons, I'll go ahead and find that. So this is it. Here it is, and then I just copy it here, and then. What I'm going to do is going back to our prototype. The easiest way is just to paste it here as well. So I'm just going to paste it here. And you can see it just ends up here. I can simply give it a class arrow as well. And you can see that because the arrow is actually absolute, what happens is it ends up exactly on top of the previous one. And this is not what we want. So what really happens here is that when we hover on it, it actually uh, moves up the whole container of these two icons up, and that ends up being the uh, that ends up hiding the arrow and showing this one. And let me show you what I mean with that. So instead of having the arrows as absolute, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a container for them. So I'm just going to create a class calling arrow arrow container right and then i will put both of these inside this arrow container now what i'm going to do i'm going to change this sort of setting i had for absolute positioning and everything from the icon to arrow container or maybe the better name would be instead of arrow container let's call it icon container right uh, and let's change this instead of arrow because one of them is actually arrow. I'm just going to change this to uh, ICN, or which represents icon. You can name it whatever that makes sense for you. And then I will just simply change the arrow to be the icon container. So now you can see what happens. It actually, if I give it a background, you will see what, what's happening here. If I make it green, for example, you'll see that it kind of gave that container instead of these two it gave its their parent container a position absolute and then basically it centered it within its con parent container which is the circle uh, that we have here and this is again not what we want uh, what i want to do initially is that i want this first icon to be in the center of this i don't care if it's uh, i don't care at the moment about this one so what i'm going to do is instead of i mean it's good that it's position absolute but instead of putting top 50 percent i just remove the top and also the translate right so now you can see that it kind of ends up here. But uh, the problem is that since I put the left to be 50%, I need to actually add a transform translate x to be minus 50% so that it gets horizontally centered, right? And now the only thing I can do to center this, at least this icon here, I can go ahead and say, let's give it this one uh, some sort of a maybe top padding. I can give it a padding top. To be maybe 20 pixel kind of eyeballing to see when it actually centers in the parent circle so maybe let's say 10 kind of looks good i'm going to go ahead and remove this background so now you can see that this is now kind of centered and then we have the next one which is supposed to come up later right and that's pretty easy we need to add a rule in css that whenever i hover on this the parent container of these, which we defined as icon container, to go up, right? And to be able to do that, it's actually pretty easy. I'm just going to say btn hover. And then what I want, I want the icon container to actually transform, 
translate y to some amount that makes the this second icon in the center so let's let's experiment so let's say translate y minus 20 pixel right so now you can see what happens it actually goes to the other side and the reason why is that we already have some sort of a transform for the icon container which is here you can see that it actually has transform translate x minus 50 percent so i'm just gonna we need to kind of preserve this otherwise it will go on that side it kind of overrides it so now i can add this as well so now you can see that it actually goes on the right direction and uh, let's make this maybe minus 40 and now you can see it kind of centers it maybe i don't know 38 you can play with this it kind of centers it right but the difference is now is that in the actual prototype you can see that when i hover it actually is an animation right which is called transition in in css so what i just need to do is making sure that my icon container here uh, let me just give more space so that you can see it even better so now here i just define a transition let's put it like i don't know 0 0.5 seconds um, and obviously we need to tell what kind of transition i'm just going to say any any kind of transition so in this case it's the transform so now you can see that actually there is this cool uh, sort of transition that you can see here uh, it's a little bit different than what we have here if you notice when i hover it actually has this kind of nice movement which is goes up a little bit and then comes down again you can see that in order to do that you need to actually uh, work with the trans transition styles that you have like originally it's it's a linear so this is like a uh, transition function that gets applied to this and it's linear you can see that it actually linearly moves it but then what we can do kotus.com so if i go to kotus.com it has actually easings uh, i can paste this here these are a bunch of predefined easings that you can use in your projects you can see we have ease in uh, quad you can see what happens and then ease out quad you can experiment with these you can see different part of it and what i'm looking for is actually let's see if we can find it here uh, it's not this one it's not this one not this one it's this one so you can see the movement of the transition it goes and then it comes back a little bit and it's called ease it's called ease out back so if you scroll down a little bit you can see that this is uh, you can obviously use a function in javascript to apply uh, to your transition but now we're going to use uh, this code so we don't need the all we don't need this thousand milliseconds or one seconds i'm just going to go ahead and copy the function uh, or, or the transition function that i want to use going back here instead of linear i can just paste this cubic bezier and now you can see that it actually has this, that going forward and then it kind of comes back but now just to make sure that we hide these uh, buttons here because now you can actually see the second icon here what we need to only do is go to the icon and then set the overflow to be hidden so everything outside of that circle will be actually hidden now you can see that we have this cool kind of effect over here so uh, I'm going to stop this tutorial right here uh, because otherwise this tutorial will just be really long. Uh, I would like you to go ahead to kotus.com codenest and try to replicate this. Uh, try to make sure that you learned everything that I talked about. And in the next session, I am going to go ahead and show you how you actually continue creating uh, all this cool stuff over here. And then finally, when the job is done, you can activate it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, please go ahead and, you know, subscribe if you haven't and like the tutorial. And uh, I'll see you next time. Have a great day and night.